you like scary movies? Totally. Hey, y'all. Totally. What's up? It's Jess. Hey, jerk. Speed kills. Ah, oh, baby, bone Sherry. I what? Lindsay. The key. You did a great job. You filthy animals. Hello, Sydney. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> I thought this was about horror movies. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the What's your favorite scary movie? Oh, I gotta fan myself. Curdled sack of milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm a really good listener. No, you're not. <laughs> it's true. We're out of here. Bye. The key. Hello and welcome. Bye, y'all. Bye. Plug it up. 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 Whoa, that sounds terrible. Ah. That sounds better. <laughs> Look at mine and Seth's big old beefy man lines and Jessica's little bitch lines. Beefy man Can't lines. Can't help it. That was way too much. Too it's much. It's either too much or not enough. That's you what know? I hear, you know? They're like, no, no, deeper. And then like, no, too deep. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Said nobody ever. <laughs> Said nobody ever. Do you ever. think it's weird that you can shake a Mountain Dew and it doesn't explode, but you can't shake a Coca-Cola? Really? Mm-hmm. I don't think I knew that. You're supposed to shake the Mountain Dew because it's got the orange juice that'll sit in the bottom if you don't shake it. Did you know uh, that? There's orange juice in Mountain Dew? I think I did know that much, but I didn't know you were supposed to shake it. Shake, so shake it. I've been drinking the Dew wrong. That's why when some people say shake it like a Polaroid picture or mm-hmm. shake it like a salt shaker, I say shake it like a Mountain Dew. Wow. Okay. It's <laughs> the first time I've ever heard <laughs> yeah, you say like that. Yeah, I've never heard you say that in my life, but okay. Ever. Why are you guys lying? I ain't lying. Why are you guys lying? So look at your laugh line. So you got a high laugh line. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. That's How fantastic. I'm doing just wonderful. I watched the movie Pearl. Yeah. And I got mm. freaking irate. That's not great. It's not this terrible. <laughs> What'd you think? I didn't think it was terrible. Oh. Um, I liked it, but I did have the thought of, I don't understand why everybody like is acting like it's something groundbreaking yes it's not let's dive into that that's what i don't understand it, that's why why do you think that though that it's not groundbreaking mm-hmm. um because it's kind of anticlimactic mm-hmm. i don't know boring like, i was expecting more like you said kills mm-hmm. or like for them to kind of elaborate on them like they mm-hmm. did in x mm. um i think that's the a big part of the problem would you agree that they took the majority of the things that made X great and stripped it away from Pearl. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like the comedic undertones. Yeah. The fact that you were watching these people and you found them disgusting, but you didn't really know why you found them disgusting. And then you started to maybe feel a little bad for them because you mm-hmm. felt like they were disgusting and you really shouldn't feel like they're disgusting. Yeah. None of that. We basically got this character Pearl, which really wasn't even that reminiscent of the Pearl and X dumped into the wizard of Oz. Yes. Yeah. Like I was talking to you about, like, cause it was a weird stylistic choice. Like it was just, it was, I don't know how to explain it other than that. Okay. Now riddle me this. It's just odd. If they take X away, let's say X never happened and they made this movie. Do you think people would be acting like this is the most groundbreaking picture no. ever? No, 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 I agree. I was physically angry after watching Mm. Pearl. The last 15 minutes were pretty good. Agreed. But leading up to that, I I was boring. Mia Goth was fantastic. She, her acting was phenomenal Mm -hmm. in it. The mom was pretty good. She was crazy. She was kind of, Mm -hmm. kind of wild, right? I mean, the only thing I can say is that it definitely made you feel bad for her character and makes you understand why she is the way that she is Mm -hmm. sort of, but that's, that's about it. Which I guess is what they were trying to do is just give her origin story. But like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. See, I felt less bad for her after watching Pearl. Mm. Now she's crazy. Exactly. I don't think, I don't feel like she was a product of her environment. I feel like the things that happened to her happened to her because of the way she is. Yeah. Mm. I like it when you agree with me. I know. So yeah, daddy. That's right. Yeah, daddy. Mm. That's right. That's right. Thank you. (laughs) Oh my God. You had a thought. I could see it. I no, I was just going to say, I feel like some of 
some of her environment affected her because of having to kind of take care of her dad mm. and her mom was kind of fucking strict i guess yes i feel like make you go kill people i don't know no yeah i i guess just because she's so like um repressed acting or something like she can't go do anything like she's stuck at home and i also feel like her mom treated her that way because she sees the things that she's doing Mm -hmm. that are like killing geese and feeding them right like and all the weird stuff that she does that's why the mom treats her that way i mean you really see she's nuts when she has that convo with mitzi at the mm. table, then you're like, oh, God, this chick is fucked up. Or just maybe in the cornfield. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't get me wrong. That or scene that. with Mitzi where she's like pretending that Mitzi's Howard and she's mm-hmm. working out how she's going to explain all this to him. I yeah. was like, oh, this is a really great mm-hmm. scene. Very well written. Great acted. And then like after five minutes, I was like, can we wrap this the fuck up? That was kind of long. Josh said he really liked the scarecrow fucking scene. Like that was his... <laughs> Yeah. So dumb. Yeah, this is weird. <laughs> I that was weird. I was like, you gotta be shitting me. This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. We get X, which is this fucking great movie. And then you get this turd. This steaming pile was of Was it turd. a different director or writer or anything? Or was it's it? All, they filmed all this while they were doing X. Uh-huh. They did it all at the same time. Hmm. Which is another reason I feel like they pushed it out because X was so popular. They were like, yeah, let's just get this out while we can. I don't know. Just a totally different style and everything. It just it didn't like fit. I don't mm-hmm. know. I was angry, like I because I liked X so much. I was so excited for Pearl. I should have known when you guys kept asking me if I'd watched it yet <laughs> that I was. <laughs> I was very interested to know your thoughts. You're like, oh god, he hasn't went on a, a tirade yet. I know. So you guys, after you watched it, you knew I was not going to like it. I was pretty sure you were not going to be into it. <laughs> yeah. The Elm Street guy said because I said, hey, I watched Pearl, and they were like, what'd you think? And I I forget what my one line was, and they're like, that's what we thought you were going to say. Hmm. <laughs> God, what a diss. I think I'm so mad because I'm so disappointed. Like, I mm. wanted to really, like, I thought this was going to be the series. There's a lot of hype around yeah, it, for sure. Yeah, there was. People talked it up big time. Well, they're liars. They were. That's why I had to grab a sun kiss. I knew we were going to talk about it. <laughs> a sun kiss. And I feel like when you kiss the sun, it puts you in a good mood. Mm-hmm. Zero calories, too. Yes. This isn't the diet. I don't know what the difference is, but it's zero calories, zero, zero sugar. Zero sugar. Does it taste any different than diet? I don't know. I need to know. You want to try it? No, thank There's you. like some... That's a weird thing about Sunkiss is like it's all orange, so you can see all of my backwash mm-hmm. on the top mm-hmm. of this, right? Just chilling Gross. there. Yeah. Just chilling. But I mean... Hey, oh, what? Uh, sort of. I had to do it because my can freaking... Well, yours exploded. Exploded. Yeah, that was nice. Exploded. I love how you come down here and you brag about how you can shake these. She's like, yeah, you can shake the shit out of these. And then you shook it and then it went everywhere. I said, should I shake this? She was more and like then questioning I did it anyways. It. Yeah. <laughs> I think you can shake these. I think you can. You said it more like a question than, yeah. I than did. anything. I mm. did. Interesting. Did you guys watch Wednesday yet? I'm a couple episodes in. I watched the first episode. <laughs> and? I'm not into it. Really? I really thought you would be for some I reason. I thought I would be too. Hmm keep watching i'm like let down but really? i'm like maybe i need to watch a few more episodes i don't know it's just not hmm. i was hoping for something a little darker i think keep watching i think you'll like yeah. it the more you watch it because the first episode if i remember it's it's pretty uh gomez heavy and mm-hmm. what's the wife's name morticia mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. once they're gone i think it gets better because they leave at the end of the first episode right yeah yeah you won't see mm-hmm. them again until maybe the last episode or the second to last yeah, I Give thought it was going to be your type of show for sure. I did too. Oh, I was yeah. really excited to see it. I loved it. I was like, could not wait to keep watching it. Then I got mad when I couldn't watch it. I'm like, oh my God, I got family stuff to do? Because you're acting like this is Thanksgiving or something. Dang. Bunch of hoe shit. I mean, it's no Pretty Little Liars, but. Oh, well, it's definitely course. better. I think it's Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> it oust, it oust, ousted? Is that a word? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It ousted Stranger Things is my favorite. That's fucking series. No, crazy. No Definitely not. You watched one episode, bro. How are you going to so, come in here and be like, that no. is asinine. No. Yes. There's not much that can top that for me. No. I Wednesday. Love Stranger Things. Just did it. The problem with Stranger Things, it was really like 10 movies. It wasn't like, yeah. I don't know. Mm. It's hard to say it, it was a show. But. You invested a lot of life into that show. Yeah. What's well, the, ep- the series, this season? It's not the whole show. Yeah. Bro. Hey, settle down over there. Okay. 
Thanks, sorry. <laughs> anyway, I think for me the reason I did went with Wednesday is because I could not wait to watch the next episode. And with Stranger Things, I just wanted it to be over. I got mad. You guys remember? Remember yeah. I recorded that episode and was like balls to the wall angry? It's because I swear it's because of the sci-fi element of it. Mm-hmm. You don't like that. You act like you know me. Oh, I know. You act like you know me, bro. I said bro four times this episode already. (laughs) That's more bros than I've ever said. We need a sci-fi month. I know. Yeah. We should do that. I don't hate sci-fi movies. January should be sci-fi month. Yes. No. Yeah. I don't think so. It's already decided two against one. Yeah. We already have a theme picked out for January. No, we don't. No. Mm -mm. Oh, aliens. (laughs) Okay. Mm -mm. (laughs) Did we already do those movies? That's great too. That's about aliens in general. I don't dislike sci-fi movies. I like the one with the little worms. So much that I can't remember the Slither. name of it. That was it. I like that. I thought he was talking about uh, Tremors. Oh. I like Tremors. <laughs> I liked the Stephen King one uh, with the wor- the little worms. Dreamcatcher. Yeah. Yep. Oh, what the else? ass worms. What about, uh, did you <laughs> so like Anything that? with worms. I like figuring out. <laughs> I like worms. I like worms. Big worms, little did worms. Did you like Nope? I liked, I thought Nope was okay. Okay. I think um, it was more like space. That's what it was. I hate You're space. You're like, I hate space. I don't like We're space. We're doing space. We're doing space. <laughs> space Space <month>. horror. <laughs> <laughs> I already know what I'm picking, too. Oh, you guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> what are you picking? Hey, we got to give the people what they want. Yeah. You know they want a space month. Mm-hmm. Nobody wants this but you. <laughs> I'm fine exactly. with space month. <laughs> I feel like all the viewers out there want me to be happy. With Space Month. With Although space month. I would venture to guess that like, I bet when I'm angry, the episodes are better because that means I'm going to mm-hmm. go on some sort of tangent mm-hmm. or I'm going to go after one of you guys for something dumb you said. HMC goes to space camp. <gasps> Love it. That's stupid. We're not going to do that. That sounds like a two month <laughs> theme to me. It does. Let's do a whole sure. quarter. We'll do the first quarter. All of, no, yeah. I'm not doing that. We can get shirts. Space. That'd be pretty sweet. That'd be cool. Can you name a horror space movie? Let's hear one. Uh, Life. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> All the alien movies. The alien movies. We've already done those. We I can't know. Do, didn't we? We did the first two. We did some of them, yeah. Isn't Red Planet one? Uh, Ghosts of Mars? If so, I've not seen that. Interesting. Boring. We'll do Dune. <laughs> is that a horror movie? <laughs> the original. Oh, God. That is a horror yeah. movie. <laughs> God, I bet it'd be more interesting than Pearl. Oh, it's fucking terrible. I like the new one. Dune. Yeah. Did you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't hate it. I Granted, was, they split into the two. Like that's the what ones. annoyed me. Yeah. I feel like they were just building up to the next one. Yeah, they were for sure. Yeah. When does that come out? It's a great question. Hmm. I'm not really into sci-fi right. movies. To remember? Spice. That's true. I think I I'm a like sci-fi. If <laughs> I really don't, <laughs> I don't know why either. You think it would interest? It scares me. Scares I mean, we, we are floating in it, so that's true. Um, I don't think I don't think it scares me. I just don't find it interesting. How could you not find space interesting? It's fascinating. It's just too big for me to comprehend. I'm a little guy. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) I just want to watch people chase other people through the woods with knives. He he wants somebody to get knifed down. He doesn't care about the galaxy. So we got to find a slasher space movie. Jason X. Oh, I'm sure there is. That's not Jason. Jason X. (laughs) Is in space. Does it take place in space? Yeah, they're like transporting him to another planet or something. And there we go. That'll be your movie. Yeah. I already said no. <laughs> oh, shit. Fuck your no. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing goddamn space. Yeah, I'm excited now. <laughs> no means no. Okay? I want some space. Yeah, you would, dude. All right, this is the first episode of our December theme, which is a wonderful Christmas. Wow. Ooh. Did you pick a movie yet? Yeah, Demonic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, demonic. Ooh. <laughs> Why'd you say it like that? I don't know. Demonic. Demonic. I'm excited. I I've seen not that. seen it. What was that noise? It was my microphone. Oh. <laughs> I was trying to pick one none of us had seen or not in a while. It really blows my mind the amount of money that we've uh, dumped into this st- studio and that we still have these shitty spring microphone stands. Oh, well, they're fine. Like I think at some point we're going to have to splurge for some good ones. And you still got that. <laughs> you still got the old high school fucking I announcements. Don't fucking high school announcements. <laughs> you got the high school <laughs> announcements microphone. And today on the lunch menu, we have hot dogs and macaroni. Can we have yeah. ones that hang from the ceiling? Uh, so we no. Can be like, It'd be in your face. Blah. You wouldn't be able to do that. Oh, that's true. It would It'd be cover like your hanging. face. Damn. It's a stupid suggestion like Space Week. Space Week is a wonderful idea. Yeah. Space Month. Months. Months. 
<laughs> space year. Terrible. You're the one that said space quarter. So yeah. I was just it was sarcasm. Like oh, this well. morning with all the, I was laying some heavy sarcasm on this morning in our group <laughs> chat, and the one person was not enjoying it much. <laughs> I was hoping for a bigger reaction. But. He was talking shit about you. I just stick up for you. Oh, like he I was coming care. and I had to come. I was in there, dude. I swung in and I was like, I don't think so. Oh, he kind of was actually. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Lumped into a larger group. Damn. It wasn't you specifically, no. but mm-hmm. I thought of you when he was saying yeah. this. I was like, I'm not going to have this shit. Yeah, did you tell him I'll beat their ass? I said I would. Mm, I will too. Yeah. I'll take my shirt off and do tell it. Tell me you? who it is after this. <laughs> okay. I don't. <laughs> I take my shirt off. <laughs> you could take okay, him. Okay. I'll swing around my head. You could take him. I'm sorry. sorry He he seems like the kind of guy that liked to hit a woman, don't you think? (laughs) Oh my god! I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Damn. I don't think he listens to this. I hope he does. This would be the one episode. It's fucked up. What? That he's a woman hitter. I didn't say he was. I said he looks like the type that would like to. Like if he's vigorously, you were, you were like he definitely would go to prison for beating a woman up. I feel like if he was vigorously, <laughs> I think that's what he said. If he was vigorously masturbating, he may think about hitting a woman. That would really get him over the edge. Yeah. Oh my god. You like you just can't get there. You're like I'm so close. I need that one fucked up thing that's gonna make me just pop. Give it a mm-hmm. check a black eye. And that would be, yeah. that would be it. He would be like, Damn. this would be it. I'm going to pop this broad in the mouth. And then he's like, you yeah. know what I mean? Oh my God. And like for Josh, it's space. It's space for sure. It is. I'm like, oh, I can't get there. I can't get there. And somebody's he's like, like, ooh, space shuttle. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Space shuttle. <laughs> somebody says space shuttle. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> and you don't want to do space. Unbelievable. I, I said we could do space. Okay. Yay. Space. space. Christ, fucking downloads are going to plummet for that. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Our movie this episode is Malignant. HMC 108 Malignant. You picked this movie, Jess. I did pick this. You know that neither of us enjoy this movie. And you were like, you know what, guys? I'm picking it. So you did this to me in December and my birthday month, by the way. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to hit me with space camp in <laughs> January. Oh, very wow i said space that's her trigger word too clearly it's the nail breaking it's like, i can't get Damn. there i can't get there space it's <laughs> like put me in a rocket and send me to the moon baby it's like mm. jeez wow that pen was expensive are you okay i'm good what are you rubbing over here you're like really worked out yeah. I said, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, she went, uh, that's her trigger oh uh, mm-hmm. apollo 13 yes <laughs> Fucking Tom Hanks. <laughs> oh. Didn't make it to the moon. Uh. Kevin Bacon. <laughs> Kevin Bacon. I don't know if I've seen Apollo 13 all the way through. Wow. It's a good one. And you're our space aficionado yeah. here. Yeah. That's crazy. That's just, wow. <gasps> did you get your outfit for Seth's party this weekend? I did. You did? Yes. Mine's upstairs. He just brought it. Are what you? part of it? You have to provide the pants. Yeah, what is that? Did you bring me a hat, a tie, a shirt, and no pants? I'm sure you have appropriate pants. I think this is wishful thinking. <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah. I don't know if they had slim fit pants in the 70s. I feel like everything was big. Mm. I feel like stuff was tight. Because like think about like disco. Their shirts and stuff are really tight. Mm. Yeah. That shirt's not going to be tight. It looks a little no. big. No. Was that your shirt? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. What size is it? I don't know. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Why are you, what is that face you're making? I'm excited. For my shirt? I'm just excited to see everybody's outfits. Uh, yeah, me too. You know my per- my character. Can I say it? Because this is like three weeks out. No. Why? I don't want her to know yet. It's a surprise. I'm a grave digger. Yeah. Nice. Isn't that cool? Mm-hmm. And space. <laughs> Fuck yeah. If you do a space-themed one next year, I'm not coming. <laughs> <laughs> Make him some kind of like alien. <laughs> Should totally do space. Uh, I how that would work, space. but yeah, I'm excited to see everyone's costumes. Interesting. You guys been up to anything interesting you want to talk about before we get into this fucking fantastic movie you picked? Mm. Nothing crazy. No. Ooh, a little burpy. A little burp. <laughs> Did you, uh, this is your first, no, we all watched at the cabin, right? Mm-hmm. And I fell asleep. You did? Yeah. Yes. Oh. Did you watch it all? I, yeah, because I remember the end. So you said, yeah, that you must be it. where we talked about it. Because I, when I got here, I was like, I feel like we talked about this movie already. But it must have been there. We talked about it in like the group chat too <coughs> on Instagram for a little bit. Mm. But I wonder if we discussed it in one of our episodes there. But we had um, watched it. I just remember talking about I it. I think we but, did. So I think we, we must did. have. We must have. 
We must have wonderful. All right. Well, in that case, our characters are Madison, played by Annabelle Wallace. She was also in the movie Annabelle. I don't know if you guys have seen that or not. Sydney, played by Maddie Hassan. Detective Shaw, played by George Young. And Detective Moss, played by Nicole Brianna White. What do you guys think of these characters? I like these characters. Her her sister's kind of annoying. (laughs) Why? You guys both think she's annoying? (laughs) The sister, yeah. Why? I don't know. She just was annoying. She's a little over the top or something. Yeah. I don't know. I feel bad for her. I feel like she's like, she wants to take care of her sister, but she can. Her sister's in this abusive relationship. Maybe a little crazy. Yeah. Yeah, maybe a little crazy. The detectives, I couldn't stand the detectives. Oh, see, I don't mind them. I like them. Oh, they're so goofy. They're a little bit of comic relief. And the way they're introduced, like they pull up with that car and it's like at that weird angle and it's like, what are you doing, James Wan? This isn't... (laughs) Street Fighter. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? I don't know. I they didn't, didn't bother them. me. No. Uh-uh. Okay. And with all the people in this movie, there's really not that many main characters. Like, no. Just no. the four, really. Which I kind of like. Yeah. You kind of like that. I kind of. I hate when there's like too much fucking mm. going on. Too me too, people. because then I have to list them all off. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? This just makes my life a lot easier. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm sure this conversation is going to be stimulating. Would you like to read the synopsis? Madison is paralyzed by shocking visions of grisly murders and her torment worsens as she discovers that these waking dreams are in fact terrifying realities. You did a great job. Thank you. Yeah, it's fantastic. 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 Did you finally throw the sausage away? It's been gone. I was waiting to see how long it took you to ever since I renovated, it's been gone. You didn't dare open it? No, I (laughs) pitched it. (laughs) It had to be all like liquid at this point. Dude, it was so bad. Like mushy when I threw it away, I was like, "Oh God!" I thought about opening it. Yes, yeah, and I was stunk. like, "I can't open it if Seth's not here." And then it sat on the corner of my desk forever. And mm. then I was like, "I'm just getting rid of it." Yeah, we'll have to get a new one. I'll have to get you one. Where'd we get that at? Rural King. The Rural King. <laughs> oh my God. Was a present. Think of all the sausage slaps you did with that. Mm-hmm. So, hmm. Interesting. How's your energy shots? delicious is it good Mm -hmm. great wonderful scene one opening scene in 1993 dr florence weaver and her colleagues victor fields and john gregory treat a violent disturbed patient named gabriel gabriel whoa at simeon research hospital who was able to control electricity and broadcast his thoughts via speakers after gabriel kills several staff members dr weaver determines that he is a lost cause and the cancer must be removed 27 years later, Madison Lake Mitchell, a pregnant woman living in Seattle, returns home to her abusive husband, Derek. During an argument about her multiple previous miscarriages, Derek smashes Madison's head against a wall, causing her to bleed at the point of impact. After locking herself in a room, she had a nightmare of a person entering their house and killing Derek. To Madison's horror, the killer attacks her shortly after seeing Derek's corpse knocking her unconscious. Unconscious? Unconscious? Unconscious. Unconscious bias. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? You know? No? Nothing? What no. are you looking like that? What do you got? To, I can tell you have a thought, big fella. What do you got? Are you done or are you still going? That was it. <laughs> I was just going to say, I thought the opening sucked. It seemed very like low budget. The mm-hmm. music was really corny. Her doing that video just seemed really odd. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It seemed really low budget. I agree. It was kind of like sci fi movie made for TV. Yeah. And the uh, acting was kind of corny. Yeah, it just felt weird. I don't know. The thing I hated about the intro, this introduction at the beginning, the first time I ever watched this, was that I thought we were getting like a Conjuring slash Insidious type movie. And then we get this with like the little guy in the back with the arms flailing behind the curtain. And they had some bad lines. It was a little corny. Yeah. So I was like, what is going on here? I keep kicking you. I don't think so. Sorry about that. It's okay. Hmm. I didn't mean to play footsie with you. We um, have to cut out the cancer or whatever she says. Yeah, it was weird, right? <laughs> I liked that part. I, I like, didn't. Oh, fuck. So this is the third time I've watched this part. Mm-hmm. I've watched this movie two and a half times. I fell asleep at the cabin. I didn't mind as much this watch because I knew what I was getting myself mm-hmm. into. I think, again, maybe like Pearl, I it's actually a good correlation between Pearl and this because I thought I was getting something, one thing, and I got something else with this movie. So the more I watch it knowing what it is, the more I enjoy the movie. Mm-hmm. It just didn't fit the rest of the movie. Like, it felt out of place. I don't know. Because the rest of it didn't feel cheesy to me. I think when the cops pull up, is cheesy. Mm. I think the fight scene at the end is kind of cheesy. Mm. 
But it didn't feel low budgy. It just felt low budgy. Wow, just yeah. make budgy. that up. Low He's budgy. making his own words. What you? Well, you liked it. What'd you like about it? Um, I mean, I like the sci-fi elements of it. I th- I thought Space. it was fucking cool, especially when she was like, mm. "We have to cut out the cancer." Mm-hmm. I thought that was sweet. Now do it um, in the British accent, like she did. Please, <laughs> no, please, <laughs> no. please, no. We put your hood up and do it. But no, I'm into British punk rock chicks. We do that, please. No. We have to cut out the cancer. <laughs> <laughs> this how I get my name. Yeah. Pip. No, I did like um, the scene with um, when what's his face Derek gets killed. Oh yeah, for sure. I hated Derek. He was it's, hot, but yeah. Really, it's I, I like it a lot more once you get to the house. Yeah. The house is fucking creepy looking. I think if they would have stood here, I am playing arm care, armchair quarterback. But I feel like if they hadn't started it with this hospital scene and just started it with Maddie and Derek, and then they introduced that hospital scene later, like they do anyway, like a video or something of it later. Yeah, that might have been. I feel better. like it wouldn't have been as abrupt. Because again, I went into it thinking we're getting like a haunted house movie, mm-hmm. and then it's like this sci-fi thing. Yeah. I was like, what is this? What is this? But that scene was creepy with him on the couch and then like mm-hmm. he turns the light on and it's gone. The cushion goes up. I yeah. love that scene. That was very James Wanny. So yeah. I have a question yeah. for you about that scene. <laughs> <laughs> James Wanny. He loves his haunted houses, James Wan. Yeah. Very good. I do at too. It. How okay, so we see she comes home, Derek slams her head against the wall because he's a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. Um and again knowing that she's pregnant with his kid, like what a f- piece of crap that guy is. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't upset at all that Derek died. It's actually, spoiler Mm-mm. alert, it's my favorite kill. When she, the person, gets up off the cushion, you see the cushion move. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he flips the light off, I think, and then the person is gone. The light is off and you see like a shadow. Yeah. Remember the TV's on? Well, the light's, it's on initially and you see the person yeah. sitting there. Yeah. And then the light goes off or maybe the TV The TV off. goes off and then he flips the light on and he's gone. Where'd the person go? Well, Disappeared. yeah, I don't know. Because Maddie's not down there at that point, correct? It's just Derek. We are seeing this through Derek's point of view. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think all my Amazon shit just got here. <laughs> um, dude, they've got like $1,000 worth of shit that they lost. What? Yeah. That's what it says. May be late. Please come back tomorrow for a return. Wow. Amazon. Amazon. Make sure you look Amazon. at the camera multiple times during this recording and say things. Okay. Do it now. Okay. The other scenes where it's from Maddie's point of view makes sense that all this weird stuff's happening because mm-hmm. it's like all going on in her head. But this scene to me, I was like, this doesn't make any sense because it's from Derek's point of view. How did the person just disappear and then ultimately it reappear? Fast. Yeah. No answers. Fast. That's one of the plot holes I have an issue with. Well, that is a question I have throughout this whole movie about Gabriel. Like, how mm-hmm. is he superhuman or something? That's another plot hole. I don't like hole. that part of it. I don't yeah. understand. Like the way he moves and stuff. It's like, well, it's just supposed to be her. Yeah. Well, a lot of it now I can overlook. It, it, originally, I had a ton of plot hole issues with it, but I can overlook most of it now. I do like that opening scene, though, with not the sci-fi scene. You're going to make me say sci-fi 500 times. Mm-hmm. Say it again. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the house scene with Derek. It's creepy. It's very creepy. Mm-hmm. And then the way the, the, the thing moves, and it's kind of mm-hmm. like a shadow at first. Like You mm-hmm. don't really realize what it is until later. So I do, th- I do like that aspect of it. I thought that was really well. Derek's neck is all fucked up. Really well done. That's yes. Sweet. Mm-hmm. And then you have the scene where Maddie comes down, sees him, and then this entity or creature is chasing her through the house, mm-hmm. um, which makes more sense to me now Yeah. upon other watches. At first, I was like, what in the heck is going on? And even after the first watch, it still didn't make sense to me, but now I understand that like basically that isn't really happening. It's mm-hmm. all going on because he locks her in like a chamber. Right. Mm-hmm. So she... Paralyzes yeah. her basically. Oh yes, it paralyzes again. Paralyzed with the hood up, British accent. Go. Nope. <laughs> You're going to wear a hoodie next week. Okay. <laughs> um, I think that's all the notes I had. Do you guys have anything? I'm um, just really like that fucking house. I like how like um, foggy it is on the outside. The atmosphere like, is really, really good. Yeah, uh-huh. they like really. I don't, I'm not gonna say overdo it, but. It's very fucking foggy and creepy looking. Kind of reminds me of the insidious house in the further. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's what it kind of reminds me of. Yes. I thought they nailed like the Seattle vibe. It's dreary. Mm. It's kind of nasty. Gray. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I like it when we agree. <gasps> Scene two. Meet Deputy Doofy. 
<laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Madison wakes up in a hospital and is informed by her sister, Sydney, that her unborn baby didn't survive the attack. After being interviewed by police, Detective Kakoa Shaw and Regina Moss, she returns home. She returns home that evening and is plagued by the figure as the lights flicker inside and outside of the house. Maddie bars herself in the house. Sydney can't get in, so she scales up the side of the house the next morning, seeing Maddie looking at the wall where it smashed in where Derek uh, crashed cracked her head against it. Madison reveals that she was adopted at eight years old and has no memories of her prior life, which Sydney apparently was not aware of until just now. The killer kidnaps a woman running a Seattle underground tour, and we see that Gabriel has tied her up in an L like up on a, what would that be, a rafter or a ceiling joist or something? Yeah, yeah. in the attic. In an attic. We don't know where she's at yet. An attic. An attic. <laughs> I lost my place, sorry. Um... We see the Gabriel or this thing. It talks through a radio telling the woman that it's waited for. It's waited for her forever, but she's got to wait. First, it's Dr. Weaver's turn. We see that Dr. Weaver receives a phone call from Gabriel. He tells her that it's time to cut out the cancer. Maddie later experiences another vision in which she helplessly watches Dr. Weaver being brutally bludgeoned by the killer. She is paralyzed while watching Gabriel kill Dr. Weaver. Okay, so this police entrance is so corny. I guess I don't. It doesn't stick out in my head, so I don't remember it. Like they pull up, they get out. There's like a one-liner, and then this chick is definitely the poor man's Wanda Sykes. Am I right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah she, she totally. She even looks like yeah. her for sure. Uh, that top angle shot though, where Maddie's running from that entity in the house, and it's showing it from above, and mm -hmm. you can see like there's no ceiling on the house, and you can see all. The, it kind of reminds me of Clue. I yeah. like that a lot. Yeah, I thought that sh that shot was awesome. Mm -hmm. Probably Twice. one of my favorite shots of the movie. Mm -hmm. That was, was really cool. Or just any of the fadeaway mm. scenes. I really like that. Was there any fun facts about how they shot that? No. I wonder if it was all mm -mm. digitally done. Or maybe a set. I don't know. Oh, that's true. Probably cheaper to do it digitally, I'd imagine. But you can see her like walking backwards and through the house. I just thought it mm -hmm. was well done. The street scene I thought was creepy. Which one's With the that? street light. Oh, she's and then looking. you could like almost barely see him. It's just like this little shadow like mm -hmm. moving. That was creepy. I like that kind of shit. I like that shit. Yeah, and I also like that she's like looking at the, which I don't. Maybe you guys can can tell me, but like when I was watching it, she's looking at that spot on the wall where he smashed her head. Mm -hmm. Do you think that she's looking at it, trying to figure out like, because obviously she's got head trauma and stuff mm -hmm. going on with her head, or is she like looking at it, thinking about the baby that she just lost? Like, which do you guys think? I was thinking more so the baby. Mm. Yeah, you agree? Mm -hmm. I couldn't tell what that was. It just was like a grunt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Space. Oh. Space. You're going to get Jess Space. going over here, dude. Did you guys know, and maybe this is the fun fact, that the Seattle Underground thing is a real thing? Like, they really... Yeah. You didn't know this already? No, or I Googled it? it during the movie. I was like, ooh, that looks cool. Is that real? And that it is. That would be freaking creepy, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. I would think it would be infested with hobos. <laughs> You would think. Well, unless it's blocked off and he can only go in and out. I mean, he gets down there pretty easily later with his well, somehow this is a movie, Josh. superhuman <laughs> wall kick. Knocking bricks out of walls. It's like, wow, Gabriel, you go, dog. We just hit like a boring scene when her friend or sister comes over and it was kind of like, oh. When she's like trying, when they get real um, deep. Yeah, I was like, oh, we could like skip this. <laughs> I've only wanted a baby this long because I want to feel a blood connection. Mm-hmm. You felt bad for her here. I can tell. Talk to I me. I did feel bad. Because she obviously hasn't had that. <sighs> mm. I think it's weird that Sydney doesn't know that this, her sister's adopted. I feel like like they had all this like these tapes around the house. and I mainly feel it's weird because they look nothing alike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm. they're exact opposites. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know. Look at my kids. They don't look anything alike. That's true. True. But when she was born into the family like that mm -hmm. that's all she knew that's she true probably didn't think anything that's about true because they had maddie first so it's not like they had sydney first and then mm -hmm. maddie came. okay i can agree with that yeah okay i think you may have changed my mind on that it also bothered me how many holes were in the roof in the attic me too like, is she not maintaining her home obviously not <laughs> well it made me think why like if there's this many holes it's probably leaking water you live yeah. in seattle where it rains all the time and if it's leaking water wouldn't you go up there yeah I'm supposed, supposed to think she never went up there into this attic. Yeah. And it's got that huge ventilation fan up there that's running all the time. 
Do you know how much this woman's electric bill probably is? Wow, that looked like a fan that liked the heat. That was a big fan coming dude. out. Makes That's it, definitely yeah. not a one fifteen or one twenty volt fan. <laughs> <laughs> That's a 240 volt, 260 volt fan easily. Because yeah, that kind of looks like my attic, and I have a little well, fan. No. Obviously, this... you're not supposed to think that that's where it's at, mm-hmm. too. So yeah, they do I'm make sure it look like plays into a it. very rundown house. Attic. But yeah. that fan is as big as a person. Mm-hmm. It's a big fan. It's pulling a lot of wattage. Big so ass I'm fan. Be a lot. Be a lot. That's all I'm saying. You know, yep. just added to the spookiness of it. I guess mm-hmm. I get it. It's all about us. Aesthetics. I couldn't Aesthetics. get that word out of my mouth. One more thing, the music. What did you guys think of the music and the score in this movie? Mm. I liked it. You did like it. Mm-hmm. It was okay. I thought it was odd choice because it like didn't fit the movie. Like mm-hmm. when she's listening to that old timey radio at the one point, and then it's almost like, and James Wan usually has really great scores. I just thought it was uncharacter. It was an uncharacteristic James Wan score for me. See, I thought it was good. I thought it was really good, like, during a lot of the Gabriel parts, like, mm. running around and shit. Yeah, like the up, up-tempo up stuff. Mm-hmm. Was it violins? I didn't even notice. I think some of it was a little bit... I should have known. Violin-y. violin It was, like, the slow, um, like, synth stuff during, like, the, the parts that were supposed to be, mm-hmm. like, heartfelt parts. It was just like, this is weird. Well, I'm going to read this now because... We're talking about it. Sure. Because I remember it. There says the recurring theme in the soundtrack is an instrumental version of Where's My Mind by the Pixies, <gasps> famously used in Fight Club, which has a similar twist ending. So it's like the same song. They just keep like. That's cool. Really? It's what it say. Say the song again. Uh, Where Is My Mind by the Pixies. I don't know the song. Do you? Uh, yeah. You do? Where is my mind? You've not heard that. Sing it, girl. Heard that. Mm-hmm. I think I do know that song. That's the song they're playing? That's what it says. Mm. That's a good song. I believe you. Yeah. Great. How about that fucking trophy, man? <laughs> that was sweet. <laughs> Jesus I really like that. I also, that's a good point. I do like that the person, the killer, made their own weapon mm-hmm. out of the trophy of the person that tried to silence them. Mm-hmm. Fucking pretty threw cool. it on the grinder. Dude, that's pretty sick. And I, yeah, I'm supposed to believe she says his grinder up there. <laughs> yeah. In the attic of all yeah. places. What does Wanda Sykes call it? Um, I don't know. Somebody's lair. She makes some yeah. comment about it. Yeah. She does say something. Dude, when they do the drawing and she's like, so I'm supposed to put an APB out on Sloth from the Goonies. <laughs> I was like, that's pretty fucking good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, shoot. So uh, this gets answered later, but at this point in the movie, did you think that Maddie was experiencing these visions in real time or that she was like dreaming them later? Real time for me. In real time? Just the way that it was, they were going back and forth. Mm. I mean, upon the first watch, I kind of thought it was like dreams. Me too. But obviously that kind of, you know. Which I really didn't catch until the second watch that it was actually putting it all together that it was happening in mm-hmm. real time mm-hmm. and she was actually witnessing all these things happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I thought was cool. I did like that aspect of it. Anything else before we move on? No, sir. Space. Space. Sci-fi space. <laughs> <laughs> Finger bang in space. I should do that. What's that? Is that BDS? That's not BDS. And what's that called when you talk into the microphone? Oh, ASMR. Yes, that. Scene three, hello, mommy dearest. During their investigation, Shaw and Moss discover a photo of Maddie as a child in Weaver's house and learn that Weaver specialized in reconstructive surgery. Cut to Gabriel back at the hideout, making a weapon out of Weaver's trophy. Madison and Sydney approach the police after Maddie has a vision of the killer murdering Dr. Fields, which was another one of uh, Dr. Weaver's partners she sees the killer stabbing the man violently the killer then calls maddie revealing himself as gabriel maddie and sydney visit their mother and learn that gabriel was an imaginary friend maddie had spoke of during her childhood but may also be someone she knew prior to her adoption shaw later finds a link between the doctors and maddie hidden on dr weaver's record journals leading him to discover the murder of dr gregory another one of her partners shaw arrives before gabriel is gone and shakes him into the sewers of old Seattle. Wow. So the scene where uh, Gabriel's killing Dr. Fields, I noticed it again the second or maybe the third watch. I don't know that I made it that far in on the second watch, 
but this watch I noticed you can actually see that the person is moving backwards. I think this is the first time you really mm-hmm. notice because you see their feet yeah. Yeah. are backwards and then the person is moving awkwardly. Mm-hmm. So it was like, okay. Yeah, I didn't really see it before. No, I didn't really notice mm-hmm. it. So I'm picking all these things up upon. I don't know why I added an extra P on up. Up upon. Up upon. Up upon. Great <laughs> upon. <laughs> on second and third watches, which is good, right? Mm-hmm. But this guy is stupid. Like, the window's open and there's like these wet footprints and you're just like, oh. I know. I'm just going to wipe them up. That was pretty like, dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and he's supposed to be a distinguished doctor. Yeah. I'd be like, I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> Like he was just in there, it wasn't there, mm-hmm. and it happened like within a split second. Yeah. So, did all of these doctors have accents or just Weaver? Just Weaver, I think. Weaver. Okay. Yeah. The weave. The well, because because she had that accent, the I was weave. like, "Is this movie taking place in the same town that the experiments?" Because Sydney drives to this abandoned hospital, mm-hmm. so then I'm like, "How is Gabriel?" getting to all these places so quickly and unnoticed and you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then it it is revealed later that this is all happening like in the same town, which then makes it even more crazy that nobody knows that she's adopted. Right. Mm -hmm. But what do I know? I made Um, a note about like his Gabriel's nasty ass hair dripping over her face, but not make mm. sense. Where he's like climbing over her. I was well, like, I actually have, I said the scene where Gabriel's climbing, climbing over Maddie is really, Mm. really cool i like that scene mm. how they did yeah, that yeah because i forgot what the twist was and so i was like oh that's gross yeah and i was like oh, okay oh it's just her hair <laughs> i remember yeah. the first watch being like it's very strange how they have the same exact color hair and length <laughs> <laughs> You're like huh that is mm. odd very strange i find it strange this guy can just work an iphone though this gabriel cat he's very <laughs> in tune with technology he is it's very impressive. This face is nasty. You like it, it huh? Is. I love that shit. You love it? It's creepy looking. It is super creepy. One other qualm I have with the movie. Qualm. <laughs> we see when this whole... Because you can see Gabriel progressively get better at moving and working the body of uh, mm-hmm. Maddie because you he hadn't been able to do that before. At the beginning, we saw him. He had his own arms and legs kind of. Oh, the, Gabe. The, we yeah. see them take off, right? Yeah. And then they put the brain, whatever. Because mm-hmm. um, at the beginning of it, he can't really walk that well. Mm-hmm. You notice like, he's like like on, up against a wall and like trying mm-hmm. to get his bearings or whatever. Um, but he goes very quickly from not being able to walk to being able to scale walls and like... Well, do you think that it plays into it that he's a parasite? They could. Like just the fact that a parasite will do anything to like attack whatever you know what i mean like mm-hmm. it's on so it's probably bendy and fucking weird and shit i that don't know may explain how he can scale walls it just I mean, seemed a bit too superhuman like for me yeah mm-hmm. when you find out what the twist is you're like well that like, it, she can't move like that so right but you see at, t- at the end she kind of has the strength right the strength has always been inside me mm-hmm. um that's a terrible terrible um impersonation of her she does have kind of like a deeper yes she does Mm -hmm. okay thank you (laughs) yeah i don't know because the detective shaw chases it the thing into this underground sewer and it like scales up that wall like Mm -hmm. kind of like a bug or a cockroach or something Mm -hmm. it's like yeah yeah that scene was also cool though you see like that old carriage down there Mm -hmm. and you see him on top of it like holding the Mm -hmm. the trophy knife thing Kind of sounds like Josh likes this movie. The more we're talking about I it, I liked yeah. it more. The more I watch it, the more I like it. Liked mm-hmm. it. I really, really hated it the first time I watched it. See, I liked it more the second time. But I also feel like I got bait and switched the first time I watched it because I was really mm-hmm. expecting like The Conjuring, yeah, The Conj, like, yeah. something maybe like more Conj. demonic. Yes, mm-hmm. and yeah. this isn't that whatsoever. This is definitely different. Mm-hmm. But interesting. I do like that scene in the sewer though, where they. Mm-hmm. he's like chasing him mm-hmm. I like that too and he like scales down that fire escape that was mm-hmm. also I was like yeah. that's wild yeah <laughs> that just that part seems a little unrealistic but I agree a lot of it seems unrealistic yeah. it's all like the like the superhuman supernatural like things that this thing is able to do mm-hmm. yeah and like later in the jail cell it's like okay there's like 20 of them in there. I really like that part yeah. too. I do. But just because just seemed... those fucking bitches had it coming. Oh my gosh. Like just leave they? her alone or you're about to find out. The one looked like she was coming to your party. <laughs> she did. Because <laughs> then I was like, what? 
time period does this movie take place in? Because of that, uh, during that scene, I'm like, well, they had an iPhone, so it has yeah. to be modern times. Uh, mm. You would think. I think they were just supposed to look like hookers or something. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably a Halloween party. Mm-hmm. We just left the Kalarski <laughs> estate. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, scene four. Hello, Emily May. The detectives enlist the psychiatric hypnotherapist to unlock Madison's memories. Madison recalls that her birth name is Emily May, and Gabriel almost led her to kill Sydney when she was inside of her mother's stomach. After Sydney was born, Madison forgot about Gabriel, causing him to go away. Meanwhile, the kidnapped mom escapes and falls from the attic as Madison's home in front of the police, revealing that Gabriel was secretly living there in the attic the entire time. The detectives find the dagger the coat and the gloves of Gabriel. They believe that Madison is the culprit and is also doing all the murders. The police arrest her while the woman reveal the woman that fell is revealed to be Madison's biological mother, Serena May, and she's taken to a nearby hospital. Can't believe she didn't die from that fall. Uh, while interrogating Maddie, she get, uh, <laughs> while interrogating Maddie, Maddie gets upset and screams, making the lights go out. Gabriel calls Detective Shaw, telling him that he's just a figment of her imagination. Sydney visits the now-abandoned Simeon Hospital, where Emily was treated, and finds that Gabriel is Emily's parasitic twin brother, who appeared as a half-formed child facing out of Emily's back. Weaver operated on Emily and was able to remove Gabriel's body, except for the brain, which was attached to Emily, so they sealed it inside of her cranium. I'm calling bullshit on that. He remained dormant until Derek hit her head against the wall turns out gabriel actually operates madison's body backwards when he takes control explaining his unnatural movements in the upside down handprints at all of the crime scenes whoa i thought annabelle which is the actress that plays maddie did a really great job during the um during the hypnotherapist scene Mm -hmm. where she's like reliving all that stuff. I thought she did a really, really great job Mm -hmm. during that. Um, I like the parasitic twin reveal. Me too. You have some information on that. I'm led to believe. Mm -hmm. I wonder though, this is the part, another plot hole that drives me absolutely nuts is that she did not know this was going on up in her attic. Nope. Well, remember they say somewhere in there that like he's controlling her, so she may not even realize what's happening. Yeah, he could have like shut that off to her, kind of like don't even think about it or whatever, yeah. something along those lines. Because they say they she, she's a prisoner and his or whatever. So I just feel like if there were somebody chained up or hung up in my house somewhere, I would know it, or at least have some weird suspicion. Like, hey, what is going on here? I think she's also, but like she's supposed to be what emotionally damaged right now because of everything that just happened. That's true. So she's kind of on a different plane of, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like also and they didn't touch on this as much as I think they should have is like the emotional abuse that Derek had put her through. Like you kind of, the more mm-hmm. you watch, the more you see it. But at first I don't think you really realize it because he makes a lot of comments, or not really a lot, but a couple comments like, uh, I'm sick, I'm tired of watching my children die inside of you. Yeah, it's fucked up. Right? Yeah. Like, imagine, like, mm-hmm. the emotional damage she already has from having all these miscarriages, and then he, like, makes comments like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's gone now. Well, yeah, but then I also <laughs> wonder, because, like, he made a, which I kind of made sense, he was like, she's been, she's had all these miscarriages, right? And then he's like, well, maybe you shouldn't be working. Like, right. so then mm-hmm. it's like, well, okay, well, is she, like, not, you know what I mean? Like yeah. at first I was like, she's not taking care of herself the way mm-hmm. she should. So it's like, but then you find out why she's having the miscarriage, which actually I like that aspect of it as well. It makes sense. But I, I feel like they, they sh- could have got more sympathy for Maddie if they had leaned into that mm-hmm. emotional trauma. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I don't know if I explained that correctly. I wish we got more in the hospital though. Cause it was creepy. Which part? When she's in the hospital, when she finds the tapes. Mm-hmm. The sister. Oh, the uh, abandoned hospital. Yeah, it would have been cooler if it was like more, more stuff happened in there. I don't know. Do you think we have had this conversation before? Because I made the joke about James Wan recording like a bunch of hospital footage and using and then just reusing it at, on, in different movies. When did we had to? This had to be at the cabin. We must talked. It about must have been. been. I did really like the home video. Mm-hmm. I, I thought that was really creepy. It reminded me of the ring. Yeah. Yeah. The um well not the home one, but the hospital one. Yeah. That one. Yeah, that was sure. creepy. The Ooh. reveal. That was really fucked up. You like that it part? Was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> a little arm. 
Yeah. It was definitely weird. I liked how they did it on the home the home footage or the whatever. VHS the, tape. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, yeah, it was like back that. in the early 90s. Yeah. That thing was gross, though, dude, when mm-hmm. it shows it on the back of her. Yeah. yeah. That was fucking... Nasty. And I did think it was also cool how they were showing the how they were doing experiments on it, and they were like uh, showing the, the flashcards, the Gabriel yeah. side of it, the flashcards, and then Emily on the front side of it, or Maddie was saying what. Do mm-hmm. you crazy. think you could really do that? I don't know. If you shared a brain, maybe In that situation probably because it had eyes. So they must be connected. Do you think like they, if one thought something, the other one would know what they're thinking? Maybe. Maybe. How weird. Maybe it's, yeah, maybe it's not even like a seeing thing. But that's why you shouldn't smoke when you're pregnant. This is what happens. (laughs) I think you're right. (laughs) Don't take acetaminophen while you're pregnant. (laughs) Is that really? You may be entitled to compensation. Well, you, can you do it in like a British? (laughs) Oh my God. Put the hood up. Can you look into the camera and do it, please? I hear we get a lot more downloads when you do that. When I look into the camera? Yeah, and say things. And especially when Seth does his shimmy shake. I got a little anxious when the sister showed up at the hospital and she drives right up to the edge of that cliff. Did you notice that? I'm like, oh my gosh, she's going to drive off the cliff. That didn't make sense to me either. No. Like how, where did the employees park when they worked there? I don't know. Or was there a gate maybe and she had to go around the gate? Like she I didn't walk through a gate, I think. I yeah. didn't get that. But there was no guardrail or anything. That place looked sweet. Yeah, it did. When she did pull up, I was like, oh, fuck. I think it looks gross. She's kind of walking through like the garden area and it looks all like fucked up. Mm-hmm. That's cool. I like abandoned mm-hmm. hospitals like that. It was creepy. Yeah. You you seem like the kind of person that would like be like, hey, let's go hang out at this abandoned hospital for the night. I would totally would. I'd go. Yeah. Why? I don't know. It'd be cool. I love that shit. I don't think so. You don't want to like do ghost hunting things? I don't want to. I would, but I don't believe in that shit anyway. But I would do it. But it's not like I would be like, hey, we should. It, like if you guys came to me, it was like, hey, do you want to do January space camp month? And I'd be like, no, I don't. But I'd do it. You know <laughs> what I mean? People pay fucking good money to like do stuff like like mm-hmm. to actually go spend a night somewhere like that. And some people like to be sodomized. I don't. Hey, <laughs> that's fine. Okay. That's like your opinion, man. So we're doing a oh, ghost gosh. thing. <laughs> We're doing a ghost hunting thing. They have the Mansfield prison one. You can go all Mm. night, I think. Mm -hmm. The uh, twat girls wanted to do it with us. Remember from the thing? Oh, yeah. You know the thing. The thing. (laughs) The thing. You know the thing. Um, I also like the scene where they uh, cut the arms. Snip. Dude, I saw a clip on the internet the other day, not to change subject, of this kid. (laughs) Why are you laughing at me, dog? I saw this thing on the internet the other day. In like the (laughs) 90s, okay? This kid was home alone. He got his arms cut off by a tractor. Oh. He, ow. That hurt. He pulled a beard hair out. He got his arms cut, and it's not hitting me in the lip. He got his arms cut off by a tractor, okay? He goes in the house with a pencil in his mouth and calls 911. They're able to reattach the arms, and he can use them. Oh what? my god! Yeah. How did he get both of them taken off? I don't know. Some freak accident. Jesus. Crazy, right? It's been like a really clean cut. I don't know, to man. Be able to like reattach it. Yeah. Ew. Gross, right? Yeah. Anyway, I like the scene where they're like taking the thing apart, and you can see they cut it, and then they smash it. Do you really think they could smash that inside of her head and then put her fu- her skull back together? I don't know. They they did right. it. They done did it. It was on video, so clearly they did it. All right, fine. <sighs> scene five, the final scenes. When will she wake up? We find out that Gabriel can force Maddie into a mental prison where she believes that she is living her normal life while he controls her body. Provoked by fellow inmates in the lockup, Maddie transforms into Gabriel by bursting out of Madison's skull and taking control of her body once more. Gabriel breaks into the evidence locker at the jail, retrieving his jacket, gloves, and dagger. He then slaughters the inmates and almost the entire precinct staff before going to the hospital where Serena is recovering from her captivity. Sydney and Shaw intercept but are attacked by Gabriel. Maddie tries to come out and stop Gabriel. Their birth mother wakes up and apologizes to Gabriel for giving him away. Sydney informs Maddie that Gabriel caused her miscarriages because she was feeding on her fetuses to gain strength. Yuck. As Gabriel attempts to kill Sydney uh, for replacing him in Maddie's life, Madison wakes up and takes back control of her body in a black mindscape don't know what that is she subconsciously locks an enraged gabriel behind bars and says she will be ready for him and 
as he promises to escape one day. With his influence gone, Gabriel sinks back into her head. Maddie is now able to channel the strength that Gabriel used. Back in the hospital, Maddie remarks that even though they are not related by blood, she will always love her as a sister. Serena looks on happily while the electric humming that accompanied Gabriel's attacks can be heard faintly. <gasps> Dude, I still don't understand how this thing, Gabriel, can turn into Neo from The Matrix. <laughs> In the prison scene? This movie goes all over. It's all over the place. But yeah, like basically this prison scene, this jail scene is like The Matrix, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fucking Wild, rips, rips the head open. I thought it was, I liked it. Scene? Yeah. Does she, she rips like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it screws them up, dude. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Which is kind of violent for a James Wan movie. Yeah. Like gory, like he doesn't usually do that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's true. So especially with the action aspect the of it, the bones popping out and all that. That's shit. true. Well, yeah. unless it's a saw movie, I guess. Yeah, that's true. But I do like that this, and I don't know, maybe you have some fun facts. I don't know, but that the thing is moving backwards. Like you can mm -hmm. see, and like the first time I watched, it, I hated this, and I think it's because you can see Maddie's head popping out over the top of his coat collar, mm -hmm. and I just thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I can't take this seriously. This like. And like her face is like this non-emotional. It's just like she's asleep all while like backwards beating people up. I'm just mm -hmm. like, this is too much for me. I can't do this. I think it's fucking sweet. I like, I enjoy it now because I know what I'm getting. I know yeah. it's coming. But at first I was like, what am I watching? Here, yeah. This is wild. And I mean, she's doing most of that, right? I don't know. I would think. That's in the like, fun in facts. It is in the fun facts. I was yeah. thinking that she did, but I don't know. Dude, and like so, Maddie like or Gabriel comes out of Maddie, turns into the fucking Neo from the Matrix, <laughs> <laughs> and goes down, gets the jacket, the gloves, the dagger, and then we. I dude, this scene cracked me up when sh Detective Shaw and the other gal are trying to leave, and she he Gabriel throws that chair. Oh and it yeah! Cracks him on the <laughs> yeah. back, dude. I was dying laughing. I was, you got to be kidding me. Like prevents them both from getting out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was fucking and great. Just the awkward way that it's thrown because the person's moving backwards. backwards yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, that's pretty good. <laughs> um, awesome. Another question, kind of a plot hole. If you were moving backwards like that and contorting your body in the way that Gabriel is doing this, you would think. When she becomes Maddie again, she would be very sore. <laughs> yeah, you would maybe think. she is a little though. They just don't really bring it up. It's just weird to me. It's like does she have like X, does she like Wolverine where she like super heals? No. I mean, do we see I mean, her this, take any Advil or anything? This thing is like absor <laughs> It absorbed all of her fetuses and that's yeah. true. I okay, know. I just think that it's a special circumstance. Yeah. <laughs> I'm digging too much into it, is what you're saying. Yes. I'm diving too deep. Yes, it's like we talked about earlier, too much. Yes, mm -hmm. too much. <laughs> I'd still like to know, and it bugs me how this thing can control electricity. Probably, I'm. I'm. You know what? I'm just. I'm over overthinking. That's it. never really explained. No. You're a science guy. You want the science behind it. Yes. But you just need to take the fact that this is this is a little bit different. Which is hilarious because I like love Game of Thrones and like riding around dragons and mm -hmm. oversized wolves and shit. And I'm perfectly fine with it. Yeah. Because it makes sense there's dragons. <laughs> but of, a parasitic twin fucking. Of course this little kid <laughs> can ride this dragon thousands of feet in the air where the air pressure is so bad that his head would likely explode. But mm -hmm. no, we'll overlook that. Yeah. But that's like in a made up world. It's fantasy. This yeah. is, you know, they set it in a realistic setting. That's exactly that's right. That's why it feels different. Thank you. Seth and I are really simpatico today, huh? <laughs> but no, they don't explain that. That is kind of annoying. Mm. But Last thing, and I'll stop shitting on this movie. Okay. My last plot hole. How is Maddie not going to go to prison for killing all these people? Because it wasn't her. She is on tape killing these mm -hmm. people. Gabriel. Gabe. What court is going to buy that? <laughs> Just saying. I have a parasitic twin that lives inside of my skull that killed all these people. I mean, there's actual video evidence of it. Maybe uh, Malignant 2 will be the court trial. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That'll be the whole movie. Monster, Malignant, mm -hmm. Maddie. Yeah. Be terrible. Huh. All right. That's it. That's all. I, that's That's what I got. Those, those are my questions. Mm -hmm. 
Nothing? Yeah. Anything you want to say before we jump over to Fun Facts with Seth? Let's do it. Fun Facts with Seth. <laughs> Oh, God, yeah, baby. <laughs> the Seattle Underground is a real tour open to the public. I would like to go on that. If I'd I do that. I think that'd be cool. cool. I'd like to go to Seattle, honestly. But here's kind of a shithole. Just really? rainy. Yeah, it's nice the times I've gone. What homeless people. Well, mm-hmm. that's any big city. Stephen King praised this movie on Twitter, writing, I watched Mal- Malignant on HBO and thought it was brilliant. He said that? Mm-hmm. You go, Stephen King. I feel King. like we talked about this. Nick Cage is a big fan of the movie, calling it an inspiration and in his favorite horror of the year. That makes sense. It's Nicholas. He's a fucking <laughs> weird dude, man. <laughs> Madison's real name is Emily May. According to the Zodiac, the month of May is for Gemini, which means two different personalities in the same person. <gasps> Whoa. The more you look at the, at the things for this movie, the more like... It's all right there. Even the beginning of the movie, the opening credits. Oh yeah. It shows you exactly what they did and, and what is happening. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I already told you about the soundtrack of the Where's My Mind. Where is it? Uh, who knows? Uh, the scenes where Gabriel was seen walking or running were not made using CGI. After Gabriel was played in disguise by Ukrainian actress Marina Mazeppa, Hot professional damn. dancer and contortionist seen in America's Got Talent. Just been in a bunch of those. There you go. Yeah. Now we know. That's fucking sweet. Do you feel sweet. like we're smarter now? Yes. I feel like we are too. The scene in the beginning of the film where the home intruder breaks down Madison's door violently throwing her against the ground where she falls unconscious mm, yes. symbolizes Ga- Gabe forcing himself <laughs> into her consciousness and body control. Her door is shown intact and unharmed later in the film, which I didn't notice. Oh, I didn't either. Foreshadowing that the violent exchange took place in her head. Huh. That would make sense then. Yeah. There you go. There's yeah. the answer to my question. I didn't notice that. Me neither. Uh, the premise has similarities to the Stephen King book, The Dark Half. Well, no wonder James yeah. Wan- or Stephen King liked it. About an author who had partially absorbed a twin in utero, which later manifests itself and kills off people responsible for its murder. Interesting. Yeah. The Dark Half? I've yeah. never heard of that. I guess it was a movie in 1993. Never heard of it. <clears throat> I'm going to check it out though. So that was it for the fun facts, but I did a couple of things about the parasitic thing. He did some research, some scientific research. So it's craniopagus parasiticus. is wow. an extremely rare type of parasitic twinning occurring in about two or three of five million births. Oh, wow. Two, two, three? Two to three two, and five two, three. Mi- yeah. Out of five million. Yeah. Okay. I have a picture of... He's like a, a re- It's a sketch picture. of a real person, like a real one who had oh it. Oh, my God. Isn't that gross? Ugh. That's almost creepier because it's like a full head <laughs> on top of the head. Yeah, it said only four cases have been documented by modern medicine to have survived birth. Really? This one is an early case that was the so-called two-headed boy of Bengal who was born in 1783 and died of a cobra bite in oh, 1787. Wow. His skull's in some kind of museum. Don't like that. Wow. Uh, December 10th, 2003, Rebecca Martinez was born in the Dominican Republic with this rare condition. She was the first baby born with it to undergo an operation to remove the second head. She died on February 7th, 2004, after an 11 hour operation. So she died having the operation done. Yeah. <clears throat> and March 3rd, uh, March 30th, 2004, Manar Maged was born with this rare condition. Uh, he had an, uh, a successful 13 hour surgery in Egypt. Um, the underdeveloped conjoined twin was attached to Manar's head and was facing upward. It could blink and even smile. But the doctors determined uh, she had to be removed. Is that the picture? No. Oh. That's of the first one, the oh. 1800s one. Yeah, and then there's one in 2021, a baby was born with two heads in Romania, but died hours after being born. Are all of these overseas? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. One was, yeah, they were. I just thought that was kind of interesting. But it is a real thing. I mean, not quite like the movie, but. Well, I think they embellished a little bit. <laughs> I mean, none of them said they had any arms or legs sticking out. But... Or could control electricity. Right. But could yeah. you imagine, like, mm. I guess now you'd probably see it in a ultrasound, but, like, older ones were just came out like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Be like, uh. Put it back in. Put it back. <laughs> put it back in. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They probably accidentally dropped them. Like, but, yeah. oh, sorry about I, And that. now it's like, obviously, you would see that mm-hmm. with ultrasounds. Yeah. You'd, oh. But that one that could, blink and, you know, that could blink and smile, like, Ugh. Yeah, yeah, that's I fucked don't know. up. How would you react? Um, your baby has two hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the cancer. 
<laughs> we have to cut out the cancer, Dr. Yeah, Weaver. so it was a real thing to an extent. It's That's crazy. crazy. Yeah. Thank you for that history lesson, Seth. Yeah. yeah, I thought, well, after the movie, I wanted to read about it. I'm like, is this like real? Now history? I expect pictures <laughs> on all of your fun facts. I know. <laughs> yeah, you really screwed yourself. We're going to need a PowerPoint next time. Okay. We, we should the projector do that. Down. I, mean, I can switch the screen. We can have the PowerPoint Edit it going. into a PowerPoint. Yes. All right, that concludes fun facts with Seth. Uh, let's do some HMC favorites. Yes, what was your favorite scene or scenes from the movie? Um, the Derek house scene. I really liked that. It was super fucking creepy. Um watching all the old tapes of maddie basically where she's talking to gabriel and they're like you know who are you talking to Mm -hmm. i thought those were really fucking creepy and also the jail scene jail Mm. cell scene the end neo the one the one by you big guy uh the couple creepy gabe scenes like the couch yes and the street light where you just see like that shadow um the whole like last 15 minutes of the movie i thought was really good Mm mm-hmm and then the reveal of what the twist was. The reveal. When they're the watching reveal. that tape, they're like, oh my God. <gasps> Maddie. I mean, could you imagine seeing that? No. No. Whoa. That's why I wear a hat all the time. I actually had a similar procedure done. Cracks me up that the mom's just kind of like, what the fuck? They never told me about any of this they shit. They told me that bitch was dead. <laughs> I don't think she said bitch, but I don't think she yeah. did either. But uh, favorite scene, probably the any of the scenes where you see that like Maddie is watching this happen, but she can't do anything. Mm-hmm. Especially when the doctor's like yelling through the back of the yeah. washing machine yeah. lid. I thought that was really cool. Uh, then I also enjoyed the the final fight scene at the end because because mm-hmm. it's so crazy and out of place in my yeah. opinion. But uh, favorite kill, Jess Derek for obvious reasons. Same. I said the jail cell just because it was like mm-hmm. there were so many gross like. There was a moves lot. and stuff. I like those moves. Hey. He's like, woo, it's a party. His, I was just the most happy for. Sam was a dude fucking was, yeah. dick. Like uh, when Greek. Gabriel like grabbed that chick's arms, which like broke him. I was like, huh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> breaks him, breaking a lot of arms. Thing you liked about the movie, Jess? I just love the ambiance of that house. I think it's so fucking creepy and just all, all the different like the pan over the rooms or whatever. Mm. Like you were talking about, I thought that was really cool. Um, I like all of the fadeaway scenes. I thought that like really added to the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, those are my that's my favorite stuff. What are we at? <laughs> the Think thing I liked about the movie. About Sorry, the I was working movie. on my review. Uh, I like the twist probably the most. <laughs> um, okay, because I kind of forgot what it was, and like halfway through, oh shit, that's right. Because mm-hmm. that just explains a lot, and I like how the contortionist thing was like a real. Because it was creepy the way that he moved. It was gross. Yes, it was different. And I don't think you could have achieved that with like CGI. I don't think so either. Yeah. It reminded me of how the girl moves in the grudge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The weird like. Which that was also a real person that did that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Mm -hmm. very cool. Uh, I like the originality of it. I First time I watched it, I hated this movie. Mm. But again, I think I got bait and switched. That's why I didn't like it. But the more I watch it, the more I like it. And can it, it kind of answers the questions and issues I had with it as you watch it and see mm-hmm. different things. So I do like the originality of it. And um, I also like the twist because I didn't see it coming whatsoever, even though they lay it all out for you mm-hmm. at the beginning and throughout the movie. Yeah. So I uh, think you didn't like Jess. Um, just <clears throat> that it is a bit slow at times. Mm-hmm. But really, other than that, that was like my only complaint. So uh, Also some slow, boring parts. Um the music at times felt weird and out of place. Um, and some of it's felt kind of cheesy. Some of the, like the opening was a little, yeah. Felt like a TV movie kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I said the corny beginning and then the, just the bait and switch of the marketing. Cause I feel like they marketed this movie to be, they were like James Wan returns to horror. And then all the clips they showed you were just like the first scene with Derek inside mm-hmm. of the house. or when Gabriel walks over top of Matt, it's like, Oh, mm-hmm. it's like a spirit supernatural mm-hmm. thing, which I was excited for. And then I kind of got this uh, sci fi action movie. I don't know. Mm. But Jess, will you watch it again? Yes. Seth, will you watch it again? I probably would. I don't know if I'd intentionally put it on, mm-hmm. but like if it was on, I might. Or if you guys yeah. wanted to, I would. I said probably not. But if it was on, I'd, I don't know. If you guys want to watch it, I'd probably do it. But it's one I think you could just throw on and not yeah. pay attention to, mm-hmm. yeah. which I'm, I'm cool with. So, all right, let's jump over to Stabby's ratings. We rate every movie on a zero to five Stabby scale. Middle movies get zeros because they suck, and other movies get fives because they're great. At the end, we'll average it out and give you the HMC average Stabby's rating for the movie. Seth, HMC 108. Malignant, what do you give this movie? 
Um, like I said, I really like the twist in it. Um, it had some pretty good creepy scenes. Um, the effects were good um, in those scenes. Some of the bad stuff, like now that I know the twist, it's not as exciting to watch. Mm -hmm. Be like, oh, well, now you kind of know what's going on. Um, some slow parts, a couple cheesy scenes. And for some reason, I feel like it's not going to age well, like visually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like in 10 years, it's going to look bad. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. It just it feels that way to me. I but can see that. I gave it a three and a half. A three and a half. Wow. No. I'm impressed with that, dude. I thought you hated this movie. No, the more we talked about it, I don't hate it as much as I thought I did. Intriguing. Yeah. We just, I don't know. Maybe the first time we watched it was just we were not in the right mindset. <laughs> Could have been. I, <laughs> I fell asleep know. when we watched together, but I, I really, really, I would have probably gave it a one the first time I watched it because I was so mad at it. But Jess, yeah. what do you give this movie? Well, um, it's no surprise that I love this fucking house. I've said it several <laughs> times. Um, I also just, I loved all the fadeaway scenes. I thought, I think the visuals are great in this movie. Maybe they won't hold up over time, but for right now, I think, I thought they were awesome. Um, I like how original this was. It was something completely different. Um, and yeah, I gave it a 4.5. A 4.5. Really liked it. You did really like it. All right, I don't know if this will shock you guys or not, but again, the bait and switch from the marketing department really pissed me off originally, but I got over it the more I watched the movie. Um, I like the originality of it now and kind of the awkwardness of it because it's kind of an awkward movie, right? Because mm -hmm. I feel like you're watching mm -hmm. it expecting one thing and then other things happen, but um, I think there are still a lot of glaring plot holes that bother me. Like Jess said, I need the science. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I'm not a scientist. Just want the science. It was my least favorite subject in school. I don't do anything with science. You're a science guy. I guess I am. Call me Tom DeLong. Although I hate space, so don't call me that. Uh, a lot of questions that I think the movie answers if you watch. Anyway, I gave it a three, which for me is probably pretty high. Cause like I said, the first time I watched it, I probably would have gave it like uh, a one. But yeah. Damn girl. Three for me. Jess, would you like to read the Rotten Tomatoes critics consensus? Although Malignant isn't particularly scary, director James Wan's return to horror contains plenty of gory thrills and a memorably bonkers twist. <laughs> That's true. How about the audience consensus, which is new? Love it or hate it, and there isn't much in between. Malignant is one horror movie that takes risks and is willing to get weird. Yes. Yes, yes, I agree on all accounts. Yep. Um... Rotten Tomatoes critics gave it a 76% on 171 reviews. The average rating was a 63%. The Rotten Tomatoes audience gave it a 52% on 500 plus reviews. Uh, their average rating was a 3.1 out of 5 or a 62%. IMDb gave it a 6.2 or 62%. All out of 91,000 ratings. Us, the Horror Movie Crew, where you should be going to get your horror movie reviews and ratings. We gave it a 3.66 out of 5, or a 73%. What's that, make it? It's okay? Mm -hmm. It's okay, yeah. I feel like that's a fair rating. It's okay. And we're yeah. pretty close to how Rotten Tomatoes yeah. rated it. It's not the best James Wan movie, but... It's good. It's okay. okay. It's mediocre. It's meh. It's okay. S what's the bottom one? I don't remember now. Sabadden. 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 <laughs> we haven't Sabadden. had a Sabadden yet. No. It's weird. Not, Not Space Month. Not Space Month's going to bring them out. Fuck no. Yep. Depends on what we yep. pick. It's going to be Spadden Month. That's what we're going to call it. Spadden Sp Space Month. Space. <laughs> Spadden Space, Space Month. Oh, wow. All right. Well, that wraps up. Look, anything else you guys want to say before we wrap up the episode? No. No. Fantastic. In that case, let's say thank you to some of our patron, all of our patrons. Vicky D, Brian Hathaway from the Don't Go Out There podcast, Kimberly D, Felicia Connor, Two Chicks in a Horror Flick, Caitlin, Ashley V, Mark and Brooke from a podcast on Elm Street, and my lovely mother, Nana. This kicks off a wonderful Christmas month and our next episode is going to be Dead Silence my pick because Seth still hasn't picked a movie or did yeah, you? I did he did Demonic oh, Demonic right. we're going to watch Demonic Demonic <laughs> yeah <laughs> sounds like a na or not a NAS like a, a monster truck yeah announcer, Sunday right? Sunday Space Admission gets you a full seat but you'll only need the edge <laughs> great wonderful that's it we're out of here goodbye bye bye y'all Bye, y'all. International Space Station. <laughs> HQ. <laughs>
HMC Space Station. Saturn V rocket. What's that? <laughs> the Apollo rocket. Hey, Krubies. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you want to hear more or you want to follow us on social media, Jess, where can they find us at? You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Horror Movie Crew Podcast. And you can listen on any major podcast platform. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. We'll see you next time. Bye, all.